On this episode, we talk with the team at HBI and their Build Strong Academy of Orlando. Build Strong Academy teaches students carpentry and electrical skills in a nine week course. And guess what? It is free. We talk with the team about how they're helping your community, how they're helping students find their new career path, and how they're helping Hole in the Wall find quality employees. Please like and subscribe. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Hole in the Wall Business Podcast with Bill and James. I'm James Groves, and along with my business partner, Bill DeMint, we want to share our journey as small business owners with you. As owners of Hole in the Wall Drywall Repair, we will attempt to peel back the curtain of owning a small business in the trade service industry and talk about the many adventures of owning a small business. Hey, Bill. James, good morning. Good times today. We've got some, we've got some guys that are near and dear to me because, as you well know, I, I went to college and I have a degree. But before I did that, while I was in high school, I went to a trade school. Oh, yeah. So I, I like the trades. I started out in the trades. And in my free time, I'm still piddling around with trades stuff. Yep. And I've made my business, my living, all from the trades. So one of the key tenants that we have here at Hole in the Wall is education. It's important yep. for us to educate our customers uh, on what we do. And it's important that we have our employees know how to do the, the job to our high standards. Yes. And then as we franchise, it's important to have our franchisees also have that same high standard and to learn how to run this business effectively. And I did not know that this organization existed as of about 60 days ago. And I was at a Chamber of Commerce event and I met a nice lady named Zoraida. And she says, oh, by the way, I'm with HBI, and I didn't know what that means. And then we got to know who they are, and we've given them a tour of our facility. We've given, I got a tour of their facility. And the yeah. Home Builders Institute is a nationwide education brand. Yeah. So we it, fell in love with them immediately. Yeah. And in a nutshell, they're, they're training people for the trades. Yeah. And I, man, I just love that. I just, and it's so needed. Yeah. And so when we were there, we met Joseph Fernandez, who's the operations manager of the, the Build Strong Academy uh, of Orlando. And then uh, we said, Joseph, you got to get on the podcast. We want to hear about it. He says, we need to bring in Alex Gomez. He's the associate vice P of HBI who oversees all of the academies. And I'm like, what do you mean all of the academies? You mean you have more than just Orlando? Right. Oh, yes, we have, you know. Dozens, like holy moly! Let's get yeah. him on the podcast. Yeah. So I am. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Alex Gomez and Joseph Fernandez. Thank you very much, guys, for showing up. So obviously, Joseph, you're you're the the local contact who I met with and talked to initially. So say hi and just let everyone know uh, who you are, so they can hear your voice. Yeah, thank you so much for having us here at the at the on the podcast. Thank you yeah. so much for inviting us today. So I brought a gift. I hope you all like lime. So I brought yeah. some Modelo limes for you. Oh, a little well, early in the morning for that right you. now. But thank you. Maybe later. Maybe later. And then Alex, you you're the big dog. You're 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 not just with Orlando. But you're kind of over over more than just Orlando, right? Yeah, thank you for having us here. Thank you for uh, inviting us. It's great to be here. So I oversee the academies for HBI, the Home Builders Institute, which has been around over 50 years. And right now we have six active academies across the country in six major markets. So we're excited. We do want to get to a dozen. We're at a half dozen right now, but HBI has a large footprint across the country. And Maybe every state right at this moment. So you have the academies, but then you also have other training facilities. Correct. So we, we have military programs at the bases. They're, they're the skills bridge programs that we work with servicemen and women who are about to end their career at within the armed forces. And they're getting ready to go back into the community and we're training them to get jobs um, so they can continue to do the good work that they've done. But we're also working with young adults and youth uh, across the country at each of the job course centers uh, in, in the country. We're uh, in about 67 plus uh, programs or locations nationwide. Wow. And then we also have our community and correction services and programs across the country where we work with young adults and adults who are either formerly incarcerated or about to be released. And they're uh, trying to get training so that they can uh, have a job once they've been released. So we do service all individuals from mm -hmm. young and those who want to come back and start a new career. And I think that's the most important part of this um, conversation is about who do we serve and why do we serve them and yeah. how can we connect them to employers like yourself? 
Well, yeah, and, and that's kind of why I kind of fell in love with the whole concept. I didn't, again, like, like I said, I didn't know you uh, were around, and we've been beating our head against the wall for years to try and find quality employees. How do we get them trained properly? I mean, it's silly, but if you're not, we talked about this off air, if you're not good at like fractions, how do you know how to read a tape measure? You know, how do you know the difference between three eighths and four eighths? Well, there's no four eighths in the tape measure, right? Well, if you're not good in math, you're not good in school, you may not have that knowledge. So when you go to our, one of our job sites and someone says, hey, cut me a piece of drywall, that's, you know, well, so we have to train them how to do those things. You guys have courses and how to do all of those. And so locally, Joseph, here in Orlando, what are some of the classes that you guys are specializing in? What are some of the things that you're teaching? Yeah, right now here in Orlando, we're teaching residential carpentry and electrical on the pre-apprentice level. So they're nine-week courses. They range they're pretty much all day. They're 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I'd be remiss to not mention that they're completely tuition-free. So in that, they're pretty transformational. That's what separates us from other trade schools. Wow. Yeah. So at no cost, someone who's looking to better their life can come in, get quality training. I've seen some of the training. You guys are teaching like theories and math for carpentry that I didn't know. I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. So it's pretty cool that you guys are digging deep. This is not just a surface course. These are some really high caliber education. So here in Orlando, you've got two different tracks, right? The carpentry track and the electrical track. I've seen your your labs and they're they're outstanding. What are some of the things you guys, because I know you do three weeks first of just kind of like basic stuff. What is that first three weeks like for the students there? Yeah, in Orlando, like the first week, whether they sign up for electrical or carpentry, we're just pounding in safety, safety, safety. They're doing a lot of their safety lectures. They're doing ladder safety. They're learning, they're identifying tools and learning how to use them and what's their proper name out in the industry when they start working, basics of a tape measure, stuff like that. And then weeks two and three, we're going more into drywall repair, precision cuts, working with the saws and stuff like that. And then the last six weeks of the program is where they're kind of honing in a little bit more on their chosen trade. Wow. And if I'm right, you guys, they, they, they come out with an OSHA 10 class as well. So they get their OSHA 10 safety card. They have the option to do OSHA 10. Yeah. And pretty much everyone takes that, that, that opportunity. But all of our students leave with an industry-recognized HBI certificate. So there's actually more than one that they can get. Um, after they've completed successfully completed the first three weeks, they have the pre-apprentice certification training, which is another nationally recognized certification they can get through us. And then at the end of the program, they get either the carpentry or electrical, whatever they signed up for. There's also an option that they can do green building, which would be a little bit more relevant for the commercial industry, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's just teaching them environmental <clears throat> techniques in buildings. So. so once somebody's completed your program, are you helping with job placement? Do you have connections with uh, companies in, the, in those industries that you can help transition someone into? Yeah, definitely. At the end of the day, we are an employment program. And as I mentioned earlier, we're a nine-week program. After that nine weeks, if they successfully complete it, they graduate in cap and gown. But we suggest to all of our students, we have, like here in Orlando, we have hiring events at least once a month. I know y'all came to our last hiring event last month. If they need to drop out because they found a job in the construction industry, then we full heartedly encourage that. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're there for a career. They're there to find. Correct. Their, that is their, the end goal. Their so. future. Right. Ideally, it happens after graduation. But job placement, to answer your question directly, job placement is a huge part of what we do. Okay. Yeah. Well, sometimes you can't go nine weeks without a paycheck. Right. And so you need to get that job. I get it. And in and, and, and full disclosure, we went to the training, the, the job fair you guys did last month, and we met like dozens of, you know, over, over a dozen of amazing students of all ages, all genders, all races, some veterans, some fresh out of high school. And we actually hired one of your, one of your students. I think she even, she even, skipped out the last couple of weeks just to get started with her job. Yeah. Y'all so. picked her up at week six. That was great. Okay. Yeah. 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 And tech, I mean, she's been here a couple of weeks now. She's on fire. Yep. She's doing great. So shout out to LaShonda. Thank you very much. Yep. For, for Speaking coming. of demographics, Alex may have a more updated number, but I know in 2022, 47% of our enrollees were females. Really? Correct. Yeah. And, and, and that's a trend that's going across the country. At each one of our academies, I would say at three out of every 10 individuals are female that have been enrolled and 
successfully graduated from our programs. I actually have a couple more numbers I wanted to share yeah. now that you bring up demographics. In 2023, HBI had 64% of HBI program participants were between the ages of 18 and 24. Uh, 17%, and this is across the country, were female. 83% were male. We served about 18,841 students across the country. We had 5,100 individuals using our learning management system, which is uh, important. And we have 710 active programs across the country. And then I can get into the demographics of who we serve. And part of that is 1% was identified as Native Hawaiian, 1% Asian, 2% American Indian, 4% identified as multicultural, 24% were either Hispanic or Latino, and 30% were Black or African American, and 39 were uh, identified as white. And this is across the country. We've issued 7,842 uh, PAC course certificates, and I think Joseph mentioned it a little bit. What makes uh, HBI different is that we have a PAC core certificate that is nationally recognized by the U.S. Department of Labor. Uh, we've been using this curriculum for almost 50 years across the country at the job course centers, at the programs in our community, and now at these academies. So our program has been tailored to nine weeks of training with the opportunity to ramp on and ramp off. What does that mean? Well, someone can come in and kind of try it out, see if this is for them, test it for a week, and do our intro. Over those five days, they talk about safety, tool identification, uh, the purposes of the tools, and some basic math. Then if they complete that week, they can go on to what we call core. Core is week two and week three. There they get a little bit more into the detail and to actually do some hands-on in the shop. And you've been to the shop and yeah. you see how much work we do out in the shop. Week four through week nine is the what we call trade so either they go into electrical or carpentry so they get the hands-on they get to actually build out an eight by eight tiny home where they get to learn how to do flooring framing roofing uh, installing windows doors tiles insulation how to patch up holes <laughs> in the wall mm -hmm. they get to learn how to do drywall which is all important so, yeah, to just to piggyback on what Joseph said earlier about our core certificate. Yeah, what's great is because I, when I showed up for my first tour, they had already had the siding on. They already had the electrical on the walls and the drywall was being put in place. This wasn't, ta wasn't taped yet. And they were building stairs to go up to these, these little 8 by 8 homes. And so they were all out there with speed squares. One, one of the things that I love is if you can make a mistake in, a, in the lab, in the shop, it's better than making a mistake on someone's house, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I love on-the-job training. I think it's it's essential for people to learn how to do it in the real-world environment. But to give them a head start so they're not messing something up in someone's home or getting hurt on someone's property, it's key. So I saw them out there using speed squares, and they're out there, you know, with saws. And this is just no joke of a training for sure. And then I came back for the job fair. It was all torn down. And so you guys... You, you strip it all down, start it again. And yeah, I, I absolutely love that. I am curious though. You guys do uh, specifically carpentry and and electricity here in Orlando. Is are all your locations training the same? So four, skills? yeah, four out of the six active academies is doing a dual trades. So carpentry and electrical. Okay, two of them are just doing carpentry for now. Part of it is funding sure. and space. So we were fortunate enough to have enough space here at the Orlando Academy. The sweet spot is about 10,000 square feet. You need to have enough space to, to do the classroom hands. The classroom training, which is about 25% of the training, and then 75% is out in the shop. So you need the space. So we were fortunate to have the space in some of these markets where we can do dual trades. Right now we're looking to add a third trade, possibly in Phoenix, our funding partner there wants to add plumbing. Oh. So yeah, we, we definitely do other trades across the country at our job corps programs or at our community programs or even in our military programs where we teach HVAC, plumbing, carpentry, electrical, and some sites we also do masonry. The point is, is that if there's an opportunity to add a trade, if there's a demand and there's the employers who are looking to hire, we definitely want to provide those training at, in, in, in those markets. But yes, to your question, we do have carpentry and electrical here in Orlando, Houston, 
Phoenix, and in Charlotte. And then we have the Academy in Sacramento and the Academy in New Orleans that just teach carpentry. Did you know that there are over 140 million homes in the U.S.? 97% of them have walls and ceilings that are built using drywall. The drywall repair industry is simply enormous, valued at over $13 billion a year. We're holding the wall drywall repair. And for years, we have been perfecting the art of repairing drywall developing and refining our systems and strengthening our brand. Our business model is simple, scalable, and easy to learn. We believe it's a real game changer. We are successful drywall repair pros who decided to take our repair business to a higher level, growing both our franchise training and support to industry-leading standards. You'll benefit from our vast experience helping your franchise hit the ground running and achieve success quickly. We'll give you access to our marketing team that has created strategic programs designed to get your phone ringing and booking new business fast. Join a fast-growing leader in an exciting, dynamic segment of the home service industry by franchising with Hole in the Wall Drywall Repair. Start building your own business and securing your own financial future today. You mentioned your partners in some of these locations, and I was a little bit surprised to find out this isn't a government-funded enterprise. Absolutely. You, could you touch on that <laughs> just a little bit? Yeah, we, we do. Um, not that we wouldn't mind uh, get, receiving funding from the government, um, but we are privately funded programs. Uh, we Our ba- major funder is the Home Depot Foundation, who has committed funding the academies that we've opened since day one. But we have also worked with other organizations in each particular market that either were local to the that particular city or site or state that have partnered with us to not only support the training, but to also help us find employment for our students. So in particular, the Phoenix Academy, we're working with the local Home Builders Association of Central Arizona, where we work closely with them. They they have raised funding from their members or from their association to fund the program. Prior to them funding the program, they were receiving monies from the local county through some funds that were allocated for COVID. But we have other programs that are fully funded or partially funded by other foundations like the Drew Brees Foundation in New Orleans. So we are working with different individuals and organizations across the country that are providing opportunities for us to get into these markets. Yeah, I I love the trades so much because I'm with someone with four children. You know, I've got some, I've got one that master's degree and he's doing great in I've got some that tried to do colleges and they got associates and they, they turn out finding careers. And then I've got a, a child who didn't go to college. And I got one who was in trades, you know, and they just, uh, they, you need to have more than one Avenue because not every student is the same. I don't learn the same way that Joseph learns. And I believe that we have such a huge debt in this nation because of the four year universities and beyond and sometimes there's just not an opportunity for somebody who may not come from a place that can afford a university, but they still are quality people and they just need that extra step in life. So being able to find a free resource to give them this jump start is great. And then in people who have been in incarcerated that need to have that jump start. They may have made a mistake when they were younger, they want to make better, and this is a great place for them to start. I want to focus a little bit on the veteran stuff. You said that you've got job poor things in, in military bases around the country. And what kind of training is, is in the bases? So the same training, the same curriculum that we provide for free at the, each of these academies is the same exact training that we're giving to uh, the servicemen and women uh, at the military bases. Uh, the only difference is that their training is six weeks long for each trade that they choose. They get to pick up to two trades while they're with us for 12 weeks. The academies, the same training is done in nine weeks, and it's done over a nine-week period where people can ramp on and ramp off. And these bases, the training is done Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. over 12 weeks. And you're working with active military personnel. So there is some flexibility. They are still working and are still um, enlisted in their active in, in the on the bases, uh, but they've chosen to do this as a skills bridge program, and it's free to them as well. They don't have to pay out of their GI Bill. They don't have to go into debt trying to get a trade or a skill set 
before being going back in, in back home or back into the community. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you gotta relaunch back into society, which is why right. when we were talking with, with, with Joseph about Maria from the camaraderie foundation, they, they help people transition back into uh, the society more on a social, mental, you know, psychological level. But this, this is the bridge that would help them get back in. So is there any benefit extra for, for, for vets? I think Zoraida was talking about there's like a first aid course you guys are offering for vets. Yeah, here in Orlando, we're really fortunate that we're part of the Transitioning Military and Veterans Program that HBI offers. I think we're one of the few, if not probably the only academy at the moment that does it. And yeah, so they go through everything that's been aforementioned already, the certifications, the OSHA 10, all that's um, offered to them as well, and their dependents, their immediate dependents or their spouse. But also, we do CPR first aid training, the basics of that. So they're able to gain that certification as well. And they get steel toe boots while they're in the program and a toolkit, a starter toolkit upon graduation. So there are a little extra perks for them. It was a nice toolkit I saw. I think DeWalt donated a ton of stuff for you guys. So that was a, a the, yeah. the toolkit I saw was beyond basic. It was a nice kit. Yeah, so. yeah. Shout out to DeWalt. That was a very generous donation. They've been a very faithful partner to us. Awesome. So... Let's talk about the types of companies that these students are getting jobs at, because obviously we aren't a carpentry company, right? And I know at the job fair, I saw people from outdoor lighting. I saw people that were job staffing companies. What are some of the students, what, what are some of the jobs that these students are, are getting into? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Well, I can speak for what's going on in Orlando, what's going on here locally. Development is all around us. There's so many opportunities and um, I'm always telling partners this. I definitely, anybody who comes through the door and enrolls in our program, I let them know. We're teaching residential carpentry, which is pretty broad in itself. You're learning a lot of different transferable skills there. And you're learning residential electrical with a few touches of commercial in there as well. But you're not limited to those. You can do low voltage electrical. A lot of our students, not a lot, but a good number go into infrastructure, surprisingly. I know Alex was mentioning masonry. We've got a, one gentleman who picked up He's doing that at night. So, yeah, it's a pretty much it's a broad amalgamation within the construction industry. Yeah, because we're not carpentry people, but it was it was interesting because you guys have a small drywall element with your training. So both tracks get drywall training because both tracks obviously do drywall. Correct. Yeah, damage just or basics, isolation. Yeah. yeah. So that was exciting because I've because we have our training lab here, which I showed you guys earlier. And in Orlando, we we want to partner with you guys to have this relationship that we can help you with those trainings from the from the drywall perspective from the repair side because it's one thing to install new drywall for your 8x8 home but it's another thing when the plumber comes in there or the electrician comes in there and drops a hole in the wall or the ceiling how do you patch that right so that knowledge so it's a win-win for me because I get I get great employee potential with your students who are looking for careers and you we can hopefully help educate your your students with something a little bit more focused on the repair side for the drywall side. So we'll, we'll get that worked out soon, I hope. Get some field trips going this way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we're definitely, yeah. We're looking yeah, at I it. wanted to highlight some of the um, success that the Orlando Academy has had, and I'm not sure if you want to just Please. quickly go over those numbers. So we opened up our doors June 14, 2021. We just celebrated three years, and we've had 448 enrollees. We've had 386 uh, graduates, 880 certificates that have been issued, 353 placements, uh, and the average wage for our student is $19.71. So that's success, and I think that that's what we're not only doing here in Orlando, but across the country at each one of our academies and each of our programs is connecting folks, once they've completed our training, to real jobs. And that's the most important part of this. It's not just getting them a training, a skill set that's good for life, but also a job and showing them how to connect to an employer and making a career out of it. And so we're not just changing lives, we're building careers. And I know that's our slogan, but it's it's the truth. And yeah. I think that's important. Love that. And that that's, that's our philosophy here. Even if we have an employer that's only here for a year or two, we know that we've given them a, a tool that they can take with them forever. Everyone, everyone will be in a home. Hopefully they'll own their own home eventually someday. And the skill sets they learn, whether it's how to run base trim or patch a hole in the wall or paint a wall or even installing ceiling fans and things like that, those are crucial skills that every person needs. And, and frankly, as a guy, 
it kind of helps us feel more manly when we know how to do certain things, right? Absolutely. And so it's, 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 it's very cool. Well, listen, any other information on, on HBI and, and the, the Build Strong Academy that we need to know about? Yeah, well, just going back to what you were saying about the partnership between Hole in the Wall and the Build Strong Academy here in Orlando, and hopefully that will spread throughout HBI, but we definitely do need folks in the construction industry to really buy in and support our program. Just coming down, meeting our students here in Orlando. I'm, I'm a phone call away. I'm an email away if you want to come to the Academy too or partner with us. If I may be so bold, if you if anybody wants to fund the program out in the construction industry, we need funders as well. But we definitely do need uh, folks in the industry to buy in and help support our cause. Absolutely. In your partnership, you have a partner with GOBA here in town, right? So mm-hmm. The Greater Orlando Builders Association. Yeah, yeah. Um, great organization as well. So fabulous. And then if someone wants to learn more about, is there a, a good website? What's the sure. best way to get a hold of you guys? Uh, well, anyone can go to hbi.org slash academies. But hbi.org will get you all the information you need. And I also wanted to give the address to the Build Strong Academy of Orlando, which is 8150 Chancellor Drive, Suite 105. And that's here in Orlando, Florida, about five minutes away from the uh, Florida Mall, not too far from where we're at right now. Yeah, not very far at all. It's it's centrally, centrally located. I actually met a student when I was there. He drives all the way from the coast, like like Deltona, Daytona, I think he lives. So he he sees such a value. He's willing to commute, you know, every day to to an hour just to get to school. So that's great. Yeah, we're getting a big influx from Polk County right now because that's such a growing area, both residential, commercial. So what's funny is I I had a meeting with my franchisees, and we have a franchise in Polk County. I said, listen, when you're ready to look for employees, I think we've got a a place for you to kind of go start scouting. So we're we're out there trying to help the best way we can. So. Gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Thank yeah, you. great for to have you. Just yeah, fabulous. You I us. love I love the organization and what you guys bring and the value you're adding to the community. And I can't wait to, to hear more um, as we progress with our partnership. We'll do it again. Bring on, maybe, maybe we can bring on some students and have some success stories down the road. We'd love to, to promote you guys some more. So thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right, thank you for having All us. Right, everyone, thanks for listening. Another good show. We'd like to thank you for listening to the Hole in the Wall Business Podcast with Bill and James. We'd love for you to join our Facebook group and keep the conversation going. If you'd like to learn more about us and our business, check us out at holeinthewall.com. If you'd like to learn more about how to start a Hole in the Wall franchise, go to holeinthewallfranchising.com.